Hey everybody, today we are starting chapter two, section five, which is algebraic proofs. A proof is the process of solving a problem logically and step by step. All right, so let's start with the algebra ones. In order to do proofs, we need to know that we can use any definitions that we've done so far. We can use any postulates or theorems or any properties. So we're gonna take a look and remind ourselves at what some of these properties of equality are. You have seen most of these in algebra. The ones that are starred are ones that are probably new to you this year and we will talk about those a little more in depth. So let's look at the first four. The addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties. These four properties here we use this when something is done to both sides of the equation. Okay, so please make a note that this is done to both sides of the equation for these four. All right, make this kind of a little smaller. Okay, so when we're looking at this, if I want to add 12 to both sides, that is addition property of equality. If I want to subtract seven from both sides, or subtract 3x from both sides. Something that I'm doing to both sides of the equation, that is subtraction. If I am multiplying both sides or dividing both sides by a number, then those are these problems. If I do this, if I have 3x minus 2x plus 7 equals 12, I don't know, making numbers up. When I do this piece right here and I make this x minus 7 or plus 7 equals 12. This is just combining like terms. Okay? And when we combine like terms, you can also call that as simplify. All right? I'm going to abbreviate. You'll see a lot of the times combining like terms as CLT. But another word that we can use for that is to simplify. All right, so anytime you're adding X's together or doing any of these four operations just on one side of your equation, you are simplifying, you're combining like terms, all right? You are not, like here, this is not the subtraction property because I'm only doing it to one side of the equation, not both sides, okay? So I hope that that makes sense. The next one that we're going to look at, we're going to review all of kind of our algebra ones first. The next one we're going to look at is substitution. If like I look at this and I said um, that X was five, I could plug five in for X. Anytime you're plugging something in, you are using my substitution property. All right. Our distributive property, anytime we are multiplying things throughout parentheses, that is when we're going to use that distributive property. All right, the next properties that we're going to look at are the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties. My reflexive property is just any time something is equal to itself. So 7 equals 7, x equals x. Those types of things are your symmetric property or your reflexive property. Symmetric is like if I said x equals 7, then 7 equals x. This is why when you're solving equations, if your final answer looks like this, I'm okay with that. I don't want you, you don't have to take the step to write it to flip it, all right, because of this property right here. And then my transitive property of equality is if I have A equals B and B equals C, then A is equal to C. So if A is 7 and 7 equals C, then A and C are both 7, okay? If there's any questions on any of that, and we'll kind of talk through these again in a minute, um, but if you have any questions on that, go ahead and write them down somewhere on your notes now. Okay, so again, when we're talking about a proof itself, we're using logic, we're using definitions, properties, and anything that we've already shown is true to get from one step to the next. So we want to solve this equation and write a justification for each step. So when we're writing that justification, that is writing the information and writing the, those justifications are the reasons that we just saw on the previous slide. 
So when I'm solving this equation, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So we start by writing the equation. Negative 5 equals 3n plus 1, and that is going to be given to us. Now, this is already on your notes, so you don't have to rewrite it. So again, like I said, we're going to start by subtracting 1 from both sides, which is going to give us negative 6 equals 3n. What did we do? What did I do from this step to get to this step? I subtracted 1 from both sides. So that is my subtraction property. All right. You can abbreviate but you need to give me at least four letters because SUB could be subtraction or it could be substitution. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is to divide both sides by three. So when I divide both sides by three, negative six divided by three is negative two. So what did I do from this step to get to this step? I divided, so that is my division property. All right, does that make sense? So same thing here. Again, you already have this first step written on your notes for you. Okay, we start with the fact the equation is given to us. All right, what do I do? I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 2. So when I multiply both sides by 2 here, this cancels out. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. So I was writing 7. Okay, negative 14. So what did I do? I multiplied both sides by 2. So that was my multiplication property. Okay, one of the things, guys, that I do not want you to do, we already kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, I how I wanted you to stop kind of writing these steps. I do not want you to do this. I don't want you to show this step if you don't have to. If you do, I want you to write it really, really, really little because if you have to write this step, you're going to want to write subtraction with this line rather than this line. All right, if you need to divide both sides by 3 and you need to write it down, I want you to write it really little so you know it doesn't get a line of its own. Okay? So please make sure that you are paying attention to that. All right, I want you to go ahead and pause the video here and do this one on your own. Try to solve your equation. All right, go ahead and check your work. Again, we start by distributing this 2 throughout the equation. Then we're going to combine our like terms. Remember, this is not the addition property because we're only doing it to one side of the equation. Then we subtract 10 from both sides and then divide both sides by 6. All right, so if you have any questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. Okay. Then we're going to look at example two here. With example two, we are going to start by writing and figuring out how I'm going to solve this equation. All right, how am I going to find x? Well, remember when we did the segment addition postulate, and I said this piece plus this piece equals the whole thing. That is where we need to start. I am going to start by writing that KL plus LM is equal to km, which again is my segment addition postulate. And I can abbreviate that as seg add post. So that's my segment addition postulate. This is why I wanted you to get used to writing that. So what we're going to do, all right, is I'm going to plug in what I know. I'm going to do x plus 3 plus lm, which is 2x minus 1 equals to km, which is 5x minus 4. So what did I do here? I plugged those numbers in, so I substituted. So that's substitution. All right, I have x's and numbers together on this side, so I'm going to do x plus 2x is 3x. 3 minus 1 is a positive 2. So again, I combine like terms or simplified. So I'm going to use CLT here for combine like terms. All right, 
the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3x from both sides. So I'm going to get 2, 5x minus 3x is 2x minus 4 over here. Again, I subtracted 3x from both sides. So I can say that's my subtraction property. All right. Then I'm going to add 4 to both sides to get 6 over here. So that is my addition property because, again, I did it to both sides. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get that 3 is equal to x. So that was my division property. All right. So, again, we're looking to see what did I do from here to get to here. That's what gets written for this step. All right. This step is going to be either given to us or we're going to be looking at um, finding a postulate. Usually it'll be segment addition or maybe angle addition that will help us solve the problem. All right, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write them down. What we're looking at next, these are those same three starred properties that we saw in the very beginning. Um, except now we're going to look at them in terms of congruence. So they work for numbers and for figures. So I can say that a segment is congruent to itself. I promise, guys, that this seems really silly, but it's going to be one of the most used that we will have of these three. We are going to use this property more than any other, and you'll see that why in later chapters. Um, but I can say a segment is congruent to itself or an angle is congruent to itself. With the symmetric property, I can say that one angle is congruent to another, so I can flip-flop that. So I can say angle one is congruent to angle two, so two is congruent to one. I can do the same thing with segments. I could say segment AB is congruent to BC, so that means BC is congruent to AC, all right? Our transitive property of congruence, again, works with both segments and angles. I could say angle A is congruent to angle B, angle B is congruent to angle C, and then that means that angles A and C are also congruent because all three of them are congruent to each other. All right, also works with segments. So if you have any questions about that, go ahead and write that down now. So what we're going to look at here is I want to see if I can identify which property we're talking about. Now, I'm going to come back here for just a second and I'm going to give you guys a little hint. So when I look at my three properties of congruence, I have R, S, T. How many congruent signs do I have? I have one, two, three. So if you can remember R, S, T, one, two, three, that will help you try to remember which property goes with what. Okay, so as we look here, I have one equal sign, okay? So if I go back to that RST one, two, three, one equal sign is my reflexive property. Now, this is my reflexive property of equality because I have an equal sign, all right? I'm not worried about you guys if you write property of equality or of congruence. I want to know that you know that that is reflexive, okay? So then I look at this one. I have segment XY is congruent to segment BW. So segment BW is congruent to segment XY. I have two congruent symbols. That is my symmetric property. Okay. Next one. Part C, I have angle ABC is congruent to angle ABC. I also want to make note that this could also say CBA because this is just another way of writing the same angle, and you will see this sometimes. Okay, so one congruent symbol, that is my reflexive property. And then when I look down here at D, I have one is congruent to two, two is congruent to three, so one and three are congruent, that is transitive. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and write it down now. And then on this next slide, I want you to go ahead and pause and try this on your own. All 
All right, go ahead and check your answers. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And I will see you guys later. And I hope you guys have a